Hi there, welcome to this video for ADSR Zebra Tutorials, it's Mark here. Today I'm going to show you how to create a nice analogue type bass. I recently purchased a Dave Smith Instruments Tetra, which has given me some inspiration. And one of the patches I quite liked on it was this patch here. Which I've recreated in the Zebra. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. So we're just going to go to the initialize patch. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to use two oscillators, three oscillators, four oscillators. I'm going to turn oscillators three and four off at the moment. We're going to use two voltage control filters. And we shall probably add some compression and some EQ, which I shall turn off for the time being. We're going to use geophonic mode. You could use polyphonic if you want. I just happen to make it on that setting. Okay, it's extremely simple. First thing to do is make sure that all your oscillators are set to a saw wave. So as you can see here, number four isn't. So we'll just go to the factory oscillators and change that to initialize, which is a saw wave. But one and two is at the moment, so that's good. So we've got, we're going to drop oscillator one by 12 semitones, and we're going to drop oscillator two by 24 semitones or two octaves. Now it's up to you, you can put on re-trigger. It's a nice sound already. Or you can leave one off. Or both off, it's up to you. You can put hard sync on. And use the sync. To give you a tougher, more gritty sound. It's up to you personally. I like the re-trigger on and I'm just going to leave it like that. The voltage control filter that I'm going to use is going to be the, um, the low pass vintage 2 which is one of my favourites. And I'm going to use envelope 2 to modulate that. First of all, I'm just going to mess around with the attack for a moment. I'm just going to turn the voltage control filter off. I'm going to set, set, set up the um, the amplitude envelope. That will do it if you want velocity control. You can add it there if you like, a little, little bit, never hurt anyone. Okay, that sounds okay then. Add the, the VCF back in and sort out the modulation. Using envelope 2. Okay, that's not the best bass line you've ever heard in your life, but we're getting there. Sounds a bit muted there. No, I don't want that. Okay, not bad. So we can turn those off. And then oscillator 3 and 4, same again. Oscillator 3 down by 12 so many semitones. Oscillator 4 down by 24. So you're using the second oscillator, so in this case 2 and 4 is sub-oscillators. Because if you turn... The 
those are your kind of high frequency content even though it's quite low still it'll be, it'll be straight across the board though let's have a look if I just show you something like span so we've got down at 42 hertz there's almost a root note which is well I guess it's running a bit D but yeah and then we turn both of them on Obviously, I'll probably put the sync back on on these, uh, this re-trigger. And then once you've got the two filters, it will tidy it up. But sorry, I'll just um, mute that and we'll go back to working on three and four. Okay, so three and four, tune in, tune in, tune in, set up. And of course, we've got the filter here. a little bit different this time and we'll use envelope 2 again now as you can see because I've added quite a amount of resonance here we're getting that real high frequency womp 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 that kind of like well it's just a filter uh, the cut off frequency resonating and peaking giving that nice sound. Now you could choose to use some key follow. If you wish. I'm just going to leave it off. I will probably add some drive. What am I doing? We're only working on two at the moment. Not too much, it doesn't have to be too aggressive. Let's hear how the four of them sound together. I think it sounds great. So, what we may do now is we've got down here, we've got some panning. Um, so, I'm going to pan that left. Now you've got a real wide. But actually, that's not really what I want to do. I want to modulate the panning randomly. So I'm going to use an LFO, um, a global LFO, and I'm going to use the random glide selection here and here. And I'll just put that up. So I'm modulating them both in opposite directions and it's up to you the speed you want to use. Just gives it that extra little bit of movement. So that sounds not too bad to me. Now of course you can mix in the volumes here. I think they sound okay. And you could normalize all four oscillators if you, if you really wanted to. Yeah, that's sounding quite good and finally we could just add some compression keep an eye on our levels remember now that's just goes to show you how powerful this patch is because that's turned more than halfway down and the master's only halfway up in the outputs so just be aware of that this clip in there, we're getting really crazy. Okay, and finally you can add some EQ. Just 
take care of some of the low end there. Some of the high end if you want and just mess around. Okay, that's fine. That sounds good to me. It's got to be the cheesiest bass line in the world, but hey, there you go. So there you go. It's a like an analog type dual bass sound. I kind of recreated the sound I heard in my um, Dave Smith Tetra. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something from it. And have a good day, and I shall see you in the next video. And by the way, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Thanks a lot for watching.